Okay, we left off 8, 882. He, he had spoken to a person who truly is imbued with Abbas Hashem. And because he feels that he's such a beneficiary of all the goodness that Hashem provided for him, as much as he has to serve Hashem, even though the Tariq Mitzros doesn't mean anything. Hashem is not asking very much for all that he's done for us. Just based on a sense of indebtedness, it means nothing. What is Hashem asking us? This is really Moshe Rabbein. Moshe Hashem, what is Hashem asking of you? Right? I mean, if you understand, if you have that level of clarity, he's not asking much. So the person who truly has Avas Hashem, he doesn't feel burdened. Doesn't feel burdened. He feels whatever Hashem is asking is meaningless. So firstly, he explains, even though we have Ramach, Mitzvah, Sasei, many of them don't even apply to us. You have to be in Eretz Yisrael, it's, it's tithing of produce, Carbonos, we're not there. We don't have all this. So when you do the final counting, how much, how much, how much applies to us? Not much. Then he says, and what about the low sasa? We have 365 negative commandments. It's much more difficult to do a do than to refrain from a don't. Mm -hmm. Right? We always say, uh, Avas Hashem is the do mitzvah. The don mitzvah, the lav, the low sasa is what? That's your Hashem. That's refrain. And when they start counting the mitzvahs, they say, we don't consider negative commands an issue. Got it? Because living properly, refraining from them, that's, that's proper behavior. Proper behavior. So they feel for all that God has done for them, their service is really, they're not doing much. So they, they're minimizing their levels of contribution or dedication or service because of their desire and the long mashegil el rotzen elokim. These are the people who are imbued with Abbas Hashem. It's interesting, you know, you say to a person, um, a person who appreciates what opportunity is. Because, you know, you come to the office two hours a day, but just give it your full focus, you get a full sal salary. Doesn't seem, doesn't seem much. Doesn't seem much, much, much of an investment. And they tell them what the salary, livable plus, that you can even afford the excesses. Person's not a problem. Another person doesn't, has been spoiled all his life, and the moment you infringe on his freedoms, he feels you're taking over his life. He says, not interested. I have to dictate my own life. You missed the boat. The person doesn't even understand what, 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 value, what value is. doesn't relate to it. So these people, because of their longing to have that relation with Hashem, what is Hashem asking for him? To be in his good favor and good standing with him. What is he asking? Nothing. Because they have, because of the Avas Hashem, they understand exactly what the value is. Therefore, whatever he's asking is considered meaningless. Yeah, it's interesting. They have a, you know, certain type of lottery that if you win it for the rest of your life you get a thousand dollars a week for the rest of your life as long as you live okay i don't buy the ticket that often so i don't know all the uh, i don't read the small print david i don't read the small print on the lottery tickets because i don't buy them that often okay thousand dollars for the rest of your life okay person says it's not a bad deal it's not a bad deal you know my, my costs aren't much, $1,000 a week, it's okay. To live till, you know, life expectancy keeps, in, keeps increasing, it's worthwhile. Do it. Hashem says, you do a mitzvah, for all eternity, you can be drawing on this act. No, it seems to be a phenomenal deal. 
But yet, a person favors goes elsewhere and invests his time elsewhere, where it's finite, limited, and not worth very much. Of course, it's here and gone, and you can't take it with you. So, logically, and we're talking about we're talking to a person who's a, who's, who's a maimon, he's a believer, he believes, he believes in Olam Abba. So why, why would you choose the alternative? This is finite, limited, not comparable to any degree, but yet you choose A and not B, or B and not A. Why? Okay, that's the way it is. Because the person, it, because th there's an issue, who do you love more? Do you love yourself? Do you love God? It's called Avas Atzmi. You know, nobody loves anybody more than he loves himself. So it's the immediate gratification, the immediate comfort, what I need now. The person otherwise sees, sees long term. That's, but you have to be able to st step back to see what, what, what value is, to make a, a proper evaluation of what, what worth and what value is. You know, it's interesting, I said, um, I know David is a student of the Chumash. You know, if you take a look, th this I doubt he ever noticed, in, uh, in Shmos, when Moshe Rabbeinu is told by Hashem, he should tell the Jews, that he's taking them to Eretz Tover Chova, a good land, a broad land, expansive location. Eretz Aknani, Achit Yamor, Rapriz, Rabusi. He identifies the, the nations of Canaan. When Moshe goes to them and he says to them, God will take you to Eretz Aknani, he, he identifies where it is. Then he says, and it's also Eretz Tover Chova. The Mephoshim don't, 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 don't uh, make this, don't stand on this issue. Don't point out this. What is he inverted? Medjur doesn't talk about it either. Hashem says, first tell them, Eretz Tov Rechova. Eretz Aknani, I'm reprising all that. Moshe Bevenu, he inverts it. Eretz, he tells them where, and then he speaks about the quality. Why? What's the reason? So what I said was, they're in, they're in a state of bondage, slavery. They're suffering. A person who's suffering, he really doesn't have the ability to see true value. Because of his pain, he wants change. But maybe change may not be better than what you have now. Maybe going from the frying pan into the fire. Who said it's better? We want out. Out to where? So the rational person says, where are we going? If it's better, I want to go there. After you tell me it's better, tell, where is it? So that's Hashem. I'm taking Eretz Tov Rechova. That's where they're going. Where is it? It's there. But when he spoke to them, he first has to tell them where it is. Where are we going? We're going to location A, B, C, D. And now, what is it? Tov Rechova. That's the reason why he inverted it. Because in terms of their capacity, they just want out. It's like, David no Bosneom, right? Hashem says to Moshe, please ask them to borrow their personal, the personal effects of the Egyptians. David no, why? So the Gemara says in Brochus, why? The Jews, they said, you know something, we want out. If we have to be busy with 10 pack animals transporting wealth, we're not interested. We just want change of a location. As quickly as we could get out, it's like most of the person's in, in prison. The person says, you know, you could be released today, but if you're released tomorrow, you have all your needs will be covered. Wait till tomorrow. The person says, you know something? I've been here long enough. I want out. I'm not willing to stay here another moment. Not willing to wait till tomorrow. Same thing. Dabrin, no. We don't want to be burdened. We don't want to be burdened to remain here. So therefore, plead with them that they must ask, despite the fact that they're burdened. Same idea. To be continued.